Hello, Stacy. I heard from my mom that you're still living with them. Is that true? You and Austin have been married for five years now. Hi, Ella. It's been a long time since we talked. Yes, it's true. Your parents have been kind enough to let Austin and me stay with them since we got married. Oh, wow. It has been five years since then. Time just flies by, I guess. <laughs> Seriously? You two are grown adults, but you're still living off my parents like parasites. I heard you moved in because you were broke, but it's been five years. How can you still be there? It's shameful. I'm sorry, what? You heard me. I have something important to tell you, so listen up. I'm being transferred to an office near you. Oh, that's great news. Congrats on getting the transfer approved. Thanks. So about that, I've been talking to mom and she said that since you and Austin are staying with her, there's no room for me to move back in. I have to find somewhere else to live on my own. Don't you think that's strange? Strange? No, I don't think so. Why would it be strange? Are you kidding me? You can't see why. It must be nice to have such a simple mind like yours. It's because of you two that I can't move back into my own mother's house, the house I grew up in. But now, because of you and Austin, I have to find some dingy apartment somewhere to rent. Do you get it now? Do you see why it's so strange? But you know what? You can cure yourself of your density by moving out as soon as possible. You want us to move out of the house? But we've been here for five years. Do you think I care about that? And another thing, mom told me that Austin is still working at that dead end factory job of his. Dead end? I wouldn't call it that. Of course you wouldn't. You wouldn't stick up for your husband. But I've heard about you as well. You stay at home all day, don't you? What a cushy life you have. You married into our family, and then you stay home and don't do anything. I didn't think that you and Austin were such parasites. You're just leeching off my parents and living the good life. Leeches? Parasites? We're hardly that. Um, Ella, I noticed that your attitude from the very beginning of this conversation has been very off. You've been saying so many rude things about me and Austin. Oh, shut it, you leech. Don't pretend you're on some moral high ground. You might have been able to trick my parents into giving you what you want, but I'm on to you guys. I saw right through your tricks. I saw what you guys did. I saw how you guys crawled in and made yourself comfortable in a house that you don't even own. You guys know that you can never make the money to buy a home like that. So you guys are thinking of squatting. It's already been five years living the good life under my parents' roof. That's long enough. Now, Ella, I don't think you're seeing the whole picture here. No, don't try to talk your way out of this. I'm putting an end to your parasitic lifestyle. I'm not going to let you get away with it when I get back. Don't say I didn't warn you. So you better pack up your stuff and vacate that house pronto. Stacy, I'm sorry to bother you, but did Ella send you any strange messages recently? It's okay if she didn't. Hi, Natalie. No bother at all. Actually, I was just talking to Ella and she called Austin and me parasites and demanded that we move out of the house. What? She said that to you? I'm so sorry. Ella can be hot-headed and say hurtful things sometimes. It's okay. You don't have to apologize for her. Can I ask what you said to her? Oh, it's terrible that she called you that. I must not have explained things properly to her and she misunderstood. I'm really sorry. You don't have to apologize. No, I do. Ella can be like a bulldozer sometimes. She suddenly decided to move back here without even asking me first and didn't listen to what I had to say about it. 
I tried to tell her it was too sudden and she was putting me on the spot. But she got angry and told me to be happy that she was moving back in. She thought I was lonely without her. But I told her that since you're always at home, I always have you as a companion. That would explain why she thinks I'm unemployed. Yes, it does. And when she asked if I was embarrassed to have a freeloader as a daughter-in-law, I should have stopped her right there. But she had me cornered. I see what happened now. Yes, but it's still no excuse for her behavior. I'm really sorry. Ella has always been obsessed with status and looks down on Austin for not going to college after high school. She even looks down on her father and me because we didn't go to college either. It can be unbearable sometimes. But you're her parents! Why does she feel the need to do that? It's her pride and ego. She graduated from Columbia and got a good job right after graduation. We've gotten used to letting her say whatever she wants and letting it slide, thinking she would eventually get over it. But it just reinforced her thinking that she's better than all of us. And I think that's one of the reasons why she wants to move back here, to show everyone in this town that she's better than them and flaunt her success at her big company job. She just wants to flaunt her success. Really? You think so? All she wants to do is show off? I really wouldn't put it past her. Anyways, about her wanting to move back. You can just leave that to me. I'll figure something out. You don't have to worry about a thing. David and I really like having you and Austin around. We don't want to change anything. Thanks, Natalie. But I don't think you have to do this all alone. Maybe we should hold a family meeting about it. Oh, a family meeting? Yes. It'll also be a strength in numbers sort of thing. Because no matter what you say, I don't think Ella would listen. You'll just be throwing more oil on the fire. I can see her saying that Austin and I were the ones that forced you to let us stay or some other accusation like that. I can hear her saying that too. It sounds just like her. I'm glad we understand each other. It doesn't have to be tonight or even tomorrow, but sometime soon. We should gather everyone and have a proper conversation about this. We won't be able to deal with her on our own. We can discuss how we want to tell her our decision. I think that would be the best way for us to resolve this with as little damage as possible. You're right. Everyone should be free tonight. I'll tell David to come straight home from work today. Could you tell Austin we can discuss this over dinner? I think that would be the best time. Of course. I'll message Austin right away. Hello, Ella. We've been receiving a lot of boxes with your name on them, but the bigger problem is that they all have been cash on delivery. Thanks for paying for shipping. All the boxes contain my stuff, so be careful when you take things to my room, okay? I'll be back next week. What? Next week? Why are you acting surprised? I told you about this already. I said that I was moving back in with my parents. Well, yes, you did tell me about that. But your mom and I haven't given our approval yet. I never said we were going to move out. Why would I need to wait for approval? I'm the oldest and all I'm doing is moving into my parents' house. And what do you mean your approval? You're just my stupid little brother's wife. I don't need approval from you. You should have listened and prepared yourself when I told you to get out. But it's still a decision that I have to make. Look here. You don't get a say in this. You're just a person that is living off of my parents' charity. Where do you find the audacity to talk to me like that, huh? Who do you think you're talking to? You're nobody married to a nobody who works at a factory. You don't even work yourself. No financial contribution means no say. Even that useless brother of mine needs to get out. You lowlifes don't deserve to be in the same house as me. Okay. Understood. That's right. You better leave. Well, if you're going to keep accusing us of leeching, 
then there's nothing else that we can do but to leave. We're going to try our best to get out of here by the end of the week. Would you be able to wait just a little bit longer? Wait? Wait for what? For you to pack up your pathetic belongings and get out of my sight? No, I won't wait. I want you gone by next week. You've overstayed your welcome in this house for far too long. It's time for you to go and never come back. Do you hear me? Hey, Stacy. What the hell happened to the house? You better explain everything to me right now. Hmm, what do you mean? Oh, stop playing dumb. You know what I'm talking about. I went to the house today, and there was nothing inside. There was no furniture or any appliances. Everything is gone. What am I supposed to do with an empty house? What is going on? Well, this is what you wanted, right? You were the one that told us to get out of there. So we got rid of all the things we didn't need and got out. Austin and I bought all the things that were in the house, so all we did was clean up our stuff. That was what you wanted, right? What? What the hell are you talking about? You left me with an empty house. That's not cleaning it. You're doing this to spite me. And then you go and lie about the furniture? There's no way that a freeloading poor couple like you could afford to buy all that. What you did was theft. Don't think I'll hesitate to call the police on you. You better put everything that you took back. Like I said, that stuff is ours. We paid for it all. The furniture, appliances, and everything else. That's a lie! We've got plenty of receipts to show it. You really shouldn't look down on us. Well, then you need to stop acting above your station. You two are just a pair of leeches. All the two of you are good for is telling lies. Hasn't anyone taught you better? I'm not dumb. I won't fall for it. Why do you constantly accuse us of lying? My parents already spent a lot of time taking care of you. But that doesn't seem to be enough for you. You had to go take everything they owned. How could you do that to them? I really should call the police on you too. Theft is theft, and it doesn't matter who you do it to. You really need to stop with your assumptions. You're making a fool of yourself. Whether you choose to believe us or not, we really did buy everything. Furthermore, we weren't the only people who were taking things out. Your parents helped us do it. So do you really plan on calling the police on your own parents? What? Why would my parents help you two losers? None of this is making any sense. Well, after you messaged me that day, I had a talk with your mother. We had a family meeting that night to talk about what Austin and I should do. Well, it was less formal than it sounds. We all sat down for dinner that day and talked about leaving. As we talked, your parents said that they wanted to go with us. What? Why would they do that when the good kid is finally coming back home? Yes. They weren't too keen on the idea of living with you again. Their exact words were, We don't want to have to take care of Princess Ella. Rather than spend the rest of their days in servitude, they wanted to come with us instead. That's what your parents said, at least. What the hell? Once we decided on that, we started to do what you wanted. We packed all the things that Austin and I bought. While what we didn't want, we threw away. Then with your parents, we left. We bought each item one at a time, so we didn't realize how many things we had actually bought. It was only when it was time to go that we noticed we had replaced pretty much all the furniture. It really shouldn't have been that surprising though. We did spend five years there, and all we did was replace the things that needed replacing. Hold on now. You're saying that mom and dad won't be living here either? That can't be. They can't prefer to go with you. They're just going to leave the house that they bought? Yes, that's right. 
They are taking a break on the couch close to me right now. They wanted to rest a bit before unpacking all the things for the new house. What new house? I don't understand what they could possibly be thinking. How could they decide to go with you two instead of staying with me? How could they even consider it? You guys are just leeches. You're not better than me. Why would they choose you over me? Nothing good can come from following you two. He's just a factory worker. You're just a parasite disguised as a housewife. There are no benefits in choosing you two. I, on the other hand, have a stable career in a big company. Anyone would see that I am clearly the better choice. You might think that, but that isn't what your parents think. Obviously, your parents have really good reasons to come with us instead of staying with you. For one, Austin owns and manages that factory. As for me, his wife, I work from home, making around $2 million a year. What? Manager? $2 million a year? That's preposterous. It isn't. Therefore, if you want to compare success alone, I'm willing to bet that both Austin and I probably have you beat individually. Staying with us also means that your parents could continue to live as they have been doing for the past five years. We've been paying for all their living expenses. You've been doing what? Paying for everything. That's why we paid to replace all their old furniture and appliances. Small expenses like that don't add up to much for Austin and I. So, are we speaking the same language now? Can you accept that logic? I admit, you almost had me there for a second. But Austin only graduated from high school. He works at a factory and has a low-ranking office job, so there is no way that he can own it outright. Please stop judging him by only looking at his academic background. You might not know this, but he's been collecting all sorts of certifications while he's been working. Moreover, he would bring big ticket business accounts to the factory. He was a very valued employee, not to mention that he's been working there for a very long time too. What does that mean? Well, instead of just wasting his years just coasting through college, he decided to get hands-on experience instead. Austin always says that he likes working with his hands rather than going to some college and thinking. He knew what his strengths were and he had set his goals around them. So as a result of his hard work and time spent, the old owner offered to sell the factory to Austin when he retired. But how could Austin afford to buy a factory? That makes no sense. Well, that's where I came in. Plus the asking price was pretty reasonable. As for me, I'm not unemployed like you've been assuming. I've been working as a designer and I have made quite a bit of money if I do say so myself. Actually, I've even done business with your current company. What? I didn't know that. There's a lot that you don't know. Anyways, as promised, we have vacated the house. You can live there all by yourself. If you need furniture and electronics, you can buy them yourself. What the hell? How did this happen? When did this all start? How could both of you make that much money in such a short time? My parents, they're just following you because of your money. We don't mind that at all. They are Austin's parents after all. They have so graciously welcomed me into their home. What's gotten you so down? You've got everything that you wanted. You're transferring back to your hometown like you wished. You're moving back to the house you grew up in, and we've even vacated it for you. What more could you have asked for? Didn't everything go as you planned it? Oh, were you thinking that you could just live off of your parents, spend their money, and treat them like your servants? I really hope you weren't hoping to leech off of them. Stop it. I know what you're doing. Of course, that wasn't what I planned to do. I have money too. I make enough to take care of my parents, too. Well, then that's good to hear. Because in two months, your parents are planning to sell that house. 
so we sincerely hope that you enjoy your time there while it lasts. Wait, what? What did you just say? Selling? My parents are going to sell the house? Yes, that's what they said. You know how you sent all your stuff here a while ago and made us pay for all the delivery fees? Well, that was the last straw for your mom. Natalie got quite angry and said that she had enough of your antics. Soon after, she went to speak to a realtor about selling the house. What? How could she? Well, this is just what your mom said. The house will be officially put on the market in two months time. So, like I already said, you have two months. So I suggest that you enjoy your time there while it lasts. We need to get back to unpacking now. So bye. Hello, Stacy. I just went to the supermarket. I bought a lot of food that we just need to reheat. We're already tired, so we're just going to have a simple dinner. Oh, you already went to the supermarket. Sorry. I didn't even realize that you left. I've been getting so many messages all day that I didn't even see yours until now. Oh, don't worry about that. You've been getting messages all day? Please don't tell me that they're all from Ella. I'm afraid so. She's been texting me and calling me non-stop. As soon as I told her that you were selling the house, she's been pestering me. Oh, so you told her. I see. Sorry that you were the one that has to deal with her. I think all the rest of us have her blocked already. Don't worry about that at all. This was all my idea in the first place. And I can understand more than anyone that you guys don't want to deal with her anymore. I'm hitting my limit here as well. As her mother, I am ashamed of what I had to do. But we've had enough of her. We just have nothing left to give. We think that what she has done for herself is great. We are proud that she went to a great college and got a great job. We are done supporting her. We are tired of the way that she treats us. Not once has she shown gratitude for having helped put her through college. I just can't believe that she would make us pay for her deliveries. Where did she find the audacity to do that? I was able to hold it in and let things go up until that moment. The dam of emotions just broke loose. I understand you completely. I would be really angry too if I did all the work and never even got a thank you for it. I definitely learned how important expressing your gratitude is after I got married. Is that right? Even among family, it is important to say thank you. But Ella missed out on the lesson. I don't think I've ever heard her say that to me or anyone else for that matter. I think that probably contributed to the dam of emotions finally breaking. Every bit of disrespect over the years just kept building and building. But do you think that your decision might have been too rash? I mean, you are selling your house. I hope it isn't out of spite. You had a lot of memories in that house. That's true. But the house is just a house. The family in it is what makes it a home. I'd rather sell the house than be separated from you and Austin. Since you two moved in, I've been having so much fun. I really enjoyed living with you two. At first, I didn't think that we would all get along this well. It definitely exceeded my expectations. I'm also really grateful that you and David understand that I work from home. You've done me a huge favor by keeping the noise levels down while I was working, and I can't thank you enough for all the baked goods that you've left on my desk while I was working. You would even make sure that I was staying on task. I couldn't have done it without your help. Those were all very little things. I'm glad that I could help. I'm also more than willing to keep doing all that from now on too. Anyway, we're almost home now. I'll have dinner ready soon. Stacy, I just got a letter from my parents saying they want to cut ties with me. What do they mean by that? Are they serious? On Natalie's behalf, I'll explain it to you. 
She's tired of the way you've been treating the family and doesn't want anything to do with you anymore. That's why she sent the letter. What the hell? How could she do that? My mother won't answer my calls or text. Give her your phone. Sorry, but I can't do that. Your mother, father, and brother have all said that they don't even want to hear your voice anymore. They didn't say that. Stop lying and get my mom on the phone. Actually, Natalie is sitting right beside me and wants to type her words verbatim. <clears throat> your behavior and lack of gratitude have made me ashamed to call you my daughter. I thought we raised you better. We don't approve of what you tried to do and don't want a daughter like you. We have Stacy now, and she's the only daughter we need. What? Why would she say that? I'm her daughter. So what if you make two million a year? Blood is thicker than water. Just wait and see. I'll advance further in my career than you ever could. Good luck with that. We're done here. No, wait. We're not done. I get to say when we're finished talking. But we have nothing else to say to you. Then just be the messenger to my mom. Tell her I'm seeing someone now and want to introduce him to them someday soon. They'll come to their own daughter's wedding, right? Even if they want to cut ties, they still have to come. Your mother says you can have as many weddings as you like and she won't be at any of them. That's so cold. How could she say that? Okay, we really have to go now. If there's anything else you want to say to them from now on, just message me. After that, Ella's life turned upside down when her parents sold their house in a hurry. She had to find a new place to live, but she had no time to look for a good one. She ended up in a nearby apartment, surrounded by boxes that she had not unpacked yet. She only opened them when she needed something. She also had to deal with the fallout of her parents' absence at her wedding. She tried to explain to her fiancé's parents why her parents would not be there, but they did not understand. They thought it was a bad sign and started to doubt her suitability for their son. Ella faced the risk of losing her fiancé and her future happiness. All this could have been prevented if Ella had been more humble and grateful.